Interactive is brought to you by Airtel, the smartphone network. Right, so this is where we get interactive with you. It's essentially, it's about issues uh, that are trending on social media and what you've been commenting about. Uh, Lord is here to take us through. Yes, 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 Ijo. Obviously, this is your most interactive segment on Journeys Prime, brought to you by Airtel, offering you more talk, longer text, and more internet browsing. Dash star, star, star 202 hash to enjoy. Now, we're on Facebook and Twitter. Find us at Journeys on TV. And our WhatsApp line is 0560-800000. Don't forget to add your name and location when you send a message. To our first story, government is assuring Ghanaians that it has taken all the necessary security measures to ensure the safety of citizens and security of the nation despite accommodating two former terror suspects. Now, Deputy Communications Minister Felix Ofosukwachi gave the assurance after concerns raised by Ghanaians about the propriety of the country's decision to accept two former Guantanamo Bay detainees of Yemeni origins. came from the U.S. government where they indicated that they had a number of detainees of Yemeni origin. Uh, these detainees were rounded up together with others and kept at Guantanamo Bay. And you've given the background of Guantanamo Bay and the concerns that have been raised about its compliance with international law and whether or not they have been violations of the rights of these individuals. Now, the U.S. government has indicated clearly that the individuals they wanted us to take have been cleared of involvement in acts of terrorism that are prejudicial to either the security of the United States or any other country for that matter. Now, ideally, they should have gone to Yemen, like you indicated, but we all know that there's a raging conflict in Yemen, and therefore, it's not conducive to receive them. Uh, sub subsequent to that, the Ghana's ambassador to the United States uh, Brigadier General Henry Smith, who is a former defense minister and a former army commander, uh, was given direct access to these individuals. He interviewed them in order to corroborate the information given him by the United States government. Now, also, security analyst Ibad Ibrahim says Ghanaians should not worry because the suspects have been cleared and they are harmless. <laughs> You've been to the Middle East before. You've traveled Several, to the Maghreb. Several, yeah. Look, Arabs are very hardworking people. Very. I, the, have a few. I love their tradition, their culture too. Yeah, especially Syrians. Syrians are artisans. They are highly skilled. They've got the acumen to help our manufacturing and industrial sector. Uh, so therefore, for the Syrians in particular, I think Ghana should be ready uh, to open their doors. We all have issues about what happened in Paris and uh, eight guys that attacked Paris and held it hostage, killing 130 people. Some of them were Syrian returnees, people who had trained with ISIS. But you can screen them. They can help in Ghana's economy. Germany wants some of these people. So if Ghana is given the opportunity, I know Syrians that are here and they are doing quite well. Mm. And some of them have actually moved their families into the country. So there is no cause for alarm. I believe the war in Rwanda has gone stale. And therefore, so former Rwanda, Rwandan, you know, militia people and rebels should not be a cause for concern for our national security. Let's do due diligence. We've done it before. It's deja vu. Uh, we created Bujumburam camp to help people in their time of distress uh, by providing them solace and redress. Uh, so we've done this and we have a strong handle on it. And I think we should be able to pull this off. But we've been finding out, what do you think? Do you feel the same way? I don't think we are in a position to receive uh, refugees or terrorists into the country because already there are a lot of foreigners here and uh, looking at Nigerians and uh, the West African countries, other Francophone countries are here and already are causing a lot of problems. The problem with Ghana is that we are very loose in terms of uh, managing ourselves and the various groupings that we have. Because we have foreigners who come, they're accommodated, and they become more powerful than citizens. And so that is my only worry. Otherwise, uh, if you accommodate a, a foreigner, it's good, it brings blessings to the nation. But as to 
how the state is going to manage and and govern them and then they don't become loopholes for external uh, maybe uh, aggressors to come in like Boko Haram and the ISIS who knows if this some of these people doesn't have a link to them so it will depend on the government to be able to do proper screening to be able to uh, ascertain the, the background of these people otherwise we will have people who have become insiders opening doors for people to come in and do as harm. I don't think we're in a position to be holding such prisoners here because our economy is very bad to my perspective and I don't think we can hold them for now. Like once you know they are, they are, they are criminals, you should know how to go about them. You should, you should have a security, a, a, like a security personnel with them. Right, and social media has gone wild, yeah, you know, yeah. over this story. And lots of people are commenting <laughs> on this issue. Okay. Now, there's this video we posted of a Fox News uh, news clip. And see, we posted it, what, just uh, about 23 minutes ago. Okay. Already, it has uh, 863 views and 33 shares. That's people fast. are actually yeah, very interested, interested in this thing. Now, uh, Shafiq says, I'm struggling as... For seven years, they have now decided to officially import professional terrorists to come and handle us. And sadly, Ghana has become a last great puppet to the West just because of financial aid. If the U.S. believes they, were, they are harmless, they should accommodate them. What happened to the Atamil's Dufiasen <laughs> policy? The price of having reckless, incompetent, clueless presidents at helm of affairs. Fabian says, so we have a murder of three Sian Blake and two sons and two hardcore Talibans all rooted in Ghana. Don't forget, we have three Ghanaian youth already with ISIS, God save us. Mm. Lot one says, Mama needs money to campaign for the 2016 general elections, so this man and his boys will do everything for money. Exchange a uh, prisoner, a terrorist for money, lol, NDC, they be keke. Ernest says, if a terrorist of this caliber and a hardcore as well is considered high risk to America and its people, how then does he become low risk for Ghana and its people? Mm. I'm wild. Kwabna Jumo says, I just don't know what Ghana stands to gain in this. I think it is because of the selfish interests of some politicians. Is the government really concerned about the safety of Ghanaians? This government lacks wisdom. I would suggest they put these two people in the house of those who agreed to accept them here. At least they will get their first share before us. God save Ghana from the hands of these tyrants. So clearly, if you look at the comments that are coming up on uh, Facebook and on social media, I am yet to see anybody who is happy Agreement, yeah. with this decision, apart from Ebad, who <laughs> thinks that there's nothing wrong with it. it. I mean, on WhatsApp as well, the, the feeling is the same. Someone says, Ghana should for once agree on this issue that we are not ready to use Ghana as a dumping ground for terror suspects. Why don't the U.S. take them if they are safe? And that's EKA from Kumasi. And he adds that what would have happened if we had said no? Hmm. And this is from Francis from Akashi. He says, we don't need these people... We don't need those people at... Okay, I don't understand what he's saying. One, one more I'll take here from Samed. He says, government ought to explain this to Ghanaians. Why Ghana? And what is the benefit from... What is the benefit the country is going to gain? Okay. I mean, no one seems to be in support over here. <laughs> now, next one is Mahama. Three years. All right. Yeah. And it's been three years, okay? And after he was sworn into office, I mean, you realize that People have credited him that he's media uh, savvy. social media savvy. And so we asked on social media, right, whether prior to the fact that he's he being social media savvy and all, people have gotten closer to him. And <laughs> you love some of the comments. Let, let's take that. All right. But was, I, I guess we just have to go first, uh, straight of all, to the president's uh, Twitter, Twitter pages. So yes. here is President Mohammed's uh, Twitter, the official account of His Excellency John Dramani Mohammed, President Republic of Ghana run by staff. So the pages are actually run by staff. And most people have the pages run by, mo most prominent people have the pages run by staff. Tweets by His Excellency are signed JM. So if you see a tweet with JM, uh, then you know. And that's why I was saying that. Uh, he did say, great uh, GH Niger collaboration by Okafor, Lewin, Ejako, Nyako, etc. and Show Banker. Split my sights with laughter. <laughs> GH movie. There's no JM by it. Which means okay. 
That's not he him. didn't post this one. Okay, okay. Anyway, but that's that's all right. But um, if you look through his tweets, well, he tends to um, get people a bit excited. Mm. Uh, he will post Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year, and the rest. Let's go on to his Facebook page as well. And on his Facebook page, the last post was uh, January 1. Okay. And that was his New Year message. Yeah. The New Year message from the president. Okay, so you posted the issue about uh, what people are making of uh, President uh, Mahama's media or ability to wow mm. the mm. media. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Many people have given President Mahama credit for being social media savvy. So they posted here, all right, people and their reactions. Uh, John Mahama updates on Facebook. That's John Mahama's updates on Facebook doesn't make sense to mm. Ghanaians mm. because citizens <coughs> had been laid off from their workplaces because of doom so doom so, and this is so traumatized because. Let's go to uh, Sana says, all right. Sana seems to want to show up. So that says that man pisses me off. He and his crew are just having Ghanaians and Ghanaian students who are on a scholarship in Russia, Ukraine. In other countries. Emmanuel Shan says he is definitely reading this post uh, or has read it already. Mama, enjoy your last time in office. Extort all the money you want. <laughs> November is just like tomorrow. Ishak says he couldn't accept my criticism and resorted to blocking me. <laughs> Mr. President, you're being reported here. He's funny. He, so he expects us all to come online, shower praises on him. Then he better fulfill his promises. Majid says, Blocking Master is Mohammed's social media name. <laughs> He's on a blocking <laughs> spree to all critics, positive or negative. Joji says, Never at all. Even if you message him, he will not <laughs> respond. For me, the mind of getting closer to me, the people have not seen the light. Francis Adai says, He has never said anything sensible on social media before. Oh, oh really? Come on. Oh, come, come on. on. Emmanuel Job says, He blocked my friend Michael. <laughs> Michael Devin Sopo, when he criticized him, now he feels he is not safe, so he traveled back to UK because of that. I'm not able to comment on this page. <laughs> I just look on. You see, he says, yes, his presence has kept me closer to him, and I'm always reading from him. And then Dunu okay. says, if you go to someone's page and insult his person, do you expect him to clap for you? Okay. Or you guys don't know the difference between criticizing and insult. Those are some of the uh, comments that are coming. Right, and we also hit the streets to find out from people how they are assessing him and all that. Let's, let's listen to that. 20%. Fine. They've done totally nothing. They're only good in talking. You know, there's a lot to be done, and they are not working. See the way people are suffering. When you just start from doom so many things are not working. You know, a lot of Ghanaians are suffering here, here and there. You know it yourself. So you are not happy with his government? At all. Well, what do you want me to tell you? If I want to strike a uh, percentage, I'll give him 85%. Really? Yeah, in the sense that it is global uh, problem concerning the economy. It's a global problem. Eh? Even unlike Europe, you know, most of Europe countries, they are facing the same problem. So. To me, I feel Mohammed is trying. Yeah, President Mohammed, talking of these politics now, I think President Mohammed should go just to leave this country for another party to come and take over it because now, using one party for the past about uh, 2012, that was at time, was, we don't see any change, me like this, for example. So you should take her for a different party to get to change. Well, I'll virtually place him on 90 skill. Certainly he has done much volatility well in a way, but I think he should be able to put certain structures in place. Like structures like? Oh, things that are not properly done. I know him, know himself, and I think uh, like Dumso, this Dumso issue has to come to an end. Uh, roads, on for structures, roads have to be reconstructed well. Schools have to be uh, I mean, uh, put in, in, in place well, so many, many things. Yeah, so I think he has to restructure himself. In. Frankly speaking, Ghana is a young country. And uh, we shouldn't uh, expect heaven instantly. And we shouldn't also expect vain promises. We should just move on track and gradually we'll reach there.
Okay, I'm, I'm going to take a break now, but Ija, are you first? I mean, how would you rate his social media presence? Well, he's, he's done a good job. Uh, his page is sponsored. Mm. And so his Facebook page is sponsored. Okay. And so you get the, he's getting uh, quite a number of likes. But it's interesting, when you look at some of the posts he puts up and the comments that follow, <laughs> they're very, very harsh. They tend to be really harsh. So here's this one. He posted a New Year message. And the very latest comments that are coming, uh, Henry says, incompetence man, get off that seat. Uh, Joseph says, please, can you change your profile picture? Vicera says, hmm, I'm suffering to Mr. President. Happy New Year, small b. David says, you, Mr. Heartless, it's time to do something for the poorer class of society. Stop robbing the poor and needy for the rich and greedy. Uh, Benjamin says, Mr. President, we don't need any Al-Qaeda people here. We need peace. And, uh, but this guy says, fantastic speech by Austin. Thank you, sir. May God bless you <laughs> for the days of your lives. And this one says, uh, next year, by this time, Mr. President will be swearing in for the second term in office. So you see, there have been, been about uh, six comments and five of them have, <laughs> uh, have, been, have been negative. So yeah. it's, I mean, it's, you tend to see people are not uh, very excited mm, about that. Uh, at all. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if his handlers are not doing a good job or not, but well. Well, if it, if it delivers, I guess the people will be excited about him. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick break now. I'll be back. Welcome back. Now, a special advisor to the Togolese main opposition leader, Jean-Pierre Faber, has debunked claims by the governing National Democratic Congress that copies of the Togolese voters' register presented to the EC by Dr. Baumia was fake. Now, Masme essay indicated that there was no way the document could be fake because the Togolese Electoral Commission gave parties in the country the electoral role there. Now, Dr. Baumia submitted one of the copies to the EC. The story has received quite a number of comments on, on Facebook. Oh, it? yes. It has uh, posted this about seven hours ago. Uh, about 141,000 people wow. reached and 341 that's, shares. That's a lot. And uh, interesting comments. Uh, you can get onto our Facebook page and get to read some of the comments that uh, we've posted. Yes, Unfortunately, we ran out of time. Yeah. A lot. So I'm going to... I'm going to wrap up right here. My director is making nice my ears. So my name is Lord Harry Sodia. Sorry. Good evening. Join News Interactive.